All right, let's grab our Bibles. First Samuel chapter 1. First Samuel chapter 1. We wrap it up this morning. From verse 1. Okay, let me read from verse 1 to 18. It's a long reading, but let's read it so that we have it in context. Now, there was a certain man of Ramatain Zophim of the mountains of Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jero, Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zoph, an Ephraimite. And he had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. This man went up from his city yearly to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. Also, the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. And whenever the time came that Elkanah and whenever the time came that Elkanah for Elkanah to make an offering, he would give portions to Penina, his wife, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he would give a double portion, for he loved Hannah, although the Lord had closed her womb. And her rival also provoked her severely to make her miserable, because the Lord had closed her womb. So it was year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord that she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. Somebody's weeping is over in Jesus' name. Somebody's weeping is over. And the way things will turn around will surprise you. You'll be surprised at the way things will turn around. You're already programmed to turn around. Then Elkanah, her husband, verse 8, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? And why is your heart grieved? Am I not, am I not better to you than ten sons? So Hannah arose after they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh. Now Eli the priest was sitting at the seat of the doorpost, at the seat by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. She prayed, she wept. Then she made a vow. She made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you indeed look on the affliction of your maid servant and remember me and not forget your maid servant, but we give your maid servant a male child, then I give you then I give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall come upon his head. And it happened as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli watched her mouth. Now Hannah spoke in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, how long will you be drunk? Put your wine away from you. But Hannah answered and said, no, my Lord. I'm a woman of sorrowful spirit. I've drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Do not consider your maid servant a wicked woman. For out of the abundance of my complaint and grief, I've spoken until now. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant your petition, which you have asked of him. And she said, let your maid servant find favor in your sight. So the woman went her way and ate, and her face was no longer sad. Her countenance changed. Mark 11. Mark 11. From verse 22. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. Have the God kind of faith. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For assuredly I say to you, Whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, And does not doubt in his heart, But believes that those things which he says will be done, He will have whatever he says. 
Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him and that your Father in heaven may also forgive your trespasses. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for your eternal holy word. Your word is you speaking to us. Let the entrance of your word give us light and give us understanding. Father, speak to us in specifics. Let your word come in answer to the quests in our hearts and minds. Father, bring a seal to the things you've asked of you throughout this period of fast and those we've asked previously. Father, mightily orchestrate the resources and hosts of heaven in response to our prayers. Leave no stone unturned. Do things in a way that everyone will know that these are answers to our prayers. Strengthen us to your glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we are bringing the fast to a close. Um, this does not mean if you want to go continue, you cannot continue. Uh, but officially we are closing this fast today. We have prayed in various areas. I've been here in all the prayer sessions and I know that a lot of incense has gone off, gone up to heaven and that God answers prayers. Um, let me talk to us on when you pray, believe, we have prayed, but you must believe. When you pray, believe. When you pray like we have prayed and like we are praying, believe. I rather pray for five minutes and believe for the rest of the time than pray for 90 days and not believe in any of the things I prayed for. It will be a waste of time if you're praying and not believing. Jesus said, have faith in God. For verily I say to you, whoever shall say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatever he says. Again, I say to you that whoever, whatever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them. And you shall have them. It's what you pray and believe for that you will have. Look at how many times people came to Jesus and asked for something. Most times for intervention in the area of health. And Jesus at the end of the day, because of the way they approached and what they did, Jesus said, your faith, your faith has made you whole. When you read a place like Mark chapter 6, you will read about a man they are called Jairus. Now, that man uh, heard that Jesus was coming his way. He went to meet Jesus because his only daughter was so sick. She was at the point of death. Now, while she was telling Jesus, say, come quickly, my daughter is about to die. The, a woman that had an issue of blood came at that moment... It, you know, when Mark chapter 5 really came at that moment and touched Jesus. And that delayed Jesus reaching Jairus' house. Because he stopped there and was saying that somebody touched me. He felt that power left his, flowed from his body. He said, somebody touched me. They said, everybody is pushing everybody here. Why are you saying that somebody touched you? He said, no, I felt virtue leave me. That virtue is power. He felt that power left him. Sometimes you lay hands on people, you can, you can feel the flow into them. You know, see, you, you, you can feel like actual, an actual flow. You can feel it in your, to the point of feeling, you can feel it. So he said that he senses that virtue left him. Um, so eventually the woman with the issue of blood spoke out and uh, admitted what was done. He said, woman, your faith has made you whole. whole. While all that was happening, somebody came from Jairus' house and told him, don't bother the master anymore. Your daughter is dead. 
And Jesus had, had it. He said, don't, don't mind them. Jesus told him, don't mind them. Don't bother about that. Just believe. He said, fear not. Only what? Believe. Fear not. Only what? Believe. Therefore, I say to you, what things save you desire when you pray? Believe. You have prayed. Now do what? Believe. It's time to do what? Believe. So I'm going to tell us five things that we should focus on from this moment on. Number one, you must believe. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 18, where we read the text. Now, okay, first of all, there is a travel. Isaiah 66, let's look at from verse 7. There is a travel. Isaiah 66, from verse 7. It says, before she was in labor, she gave birth. Before her pain came, she delivered a child, a male child. Who has had such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to give birth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion was in labor, she brought forth or gave birth to her children. Birth comes after travel, labor, the pain. And when we take a time and a season to pray earnestly, we are traveling, we are laboring, we are in pain, we are laboring to bring forth something. After a travel, there shall be a birth. Are you here? So traveling for 21 days, even for three days, is enough to birth certain things. So expect the birth of the things we ask for. When Hannah traveled, she gave birth to a male child, and she named him Samuel. What Samuel? The product of my prayer. The product of my travel. She traveled in prayer the way she prayed. Eli was not hearing what she was saying, but she was speaking to God. She looked like a mad fellow that day. Eli thought she was drunk and approached her and said, what's wrong with you? How long will you keep on drinking? She was praying like a mad fellow. She traveled. She traveled. She labored in prayer. In the epistles, Paul talks of those that labor with him in prayer. It's labor. It's labor. Labor to bring forth. Like a woman in the bathroom. Or what do they call it? What do they call it? Labor room. Labor to bring forth. So after a travel of 21 years, days, there should be a bath. You're giving birth to something. We are giving birth to something. The things we ask for shall be manifested. So Hannah named the child Samuel. Samuel means the product of my prayer. This is it. This is it. This is it. Who has seen such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to give birth in one day or shall the nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion traveled, was in labor, she gave birth to her children. Verse 9. Now God asks, Shall I bring to the time of birth? Shall I lead you to fast and pray? And those that were in the sessions, we know that God, the presence of God was with us in every session. Shall I bring to the time of birth and not cause delivery? Says the Lord. Shall I, who cause delivery, shut the womb? Says your God. So, first, there is a travel. You travel. You pray. Travel is, when we are talking of travel, really, is praying below the surface. Is praying with pain. With, with, I mean, you're going deep. You're, you're, you're praying from the depths of your heart. Sometimes you feel the pain physically. Travel. As soon as Zion traveled, she brought forth her children. So we have traveled and we are still traveling. That brings us to the next thing. The second thing. 
believe. If you travel and not believe, you waste your time. You waste God's time. You waste resources. Whatever things you desire when you pray, believe. When you pray, believe. When you pray, believe. Fear not. Just believe. And so you look at 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 18. 1 Samuel 1, 18. When, when Hannah finished praying, and then I went there and asked her, what's wrong with you? When will you stop drinking? He thought she was drunk. And she explained that she's not drunk. That she had come with a burden. And that she's pouring out her heart. That burden before the Lord. And then I said, okay, may the Lord grant you. Even as your petitions. She said, amen. Then she said, let your maid servant find favor on your side. Verse 18. So the woman went her way and ate. She was not eating before. She was, she was, she was so sad. So burdened. So miserable. She was not eating. When she believed, she ate. When she believed, her face changed. Her countenance changed. You can't tell me you're praying and the burden is still on your face. You can't tell me you're believing and that burden is still here. When you pray through, peace comes into your heart. It will reflect in your face. Your face. Once you have peace in your heart, it will reflect in your face. The tension will leave your face. She ate. She ate. And her countenance changed. Switched to amplified. Let me see what you have there. Her face changed. You could see from her face that it's no more the same. That was her last trip to Shiloh in that state. So the woman went on her way and ate, and her face was no longer sad. The same thing. Now look at Isaiah 28, verse 16. Isaiah 28, verse 16. Believe. What did you pray for? Believe. Believe. Belief keeps you in expectation. Such that even if you travel to Sokoto and see that thing you prayed for, you will recognize it. You will know this is what I prayed for. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I lay in Zion a stone for a foundation, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not act hastily. Let me tell you, the pressure you put on your neighbor, on your spouse, on whoever is around, Hey, this thing must be done. It must be done. It must be done. It's not faith. It's a spirit of haste. I'm not saying you shouldn't remind people of what needs to be, but many times people act in a spirit of faith, a haste, and it's counter faith. And it leads to mistakes if one panders to that thing every time it comes. What you cannot do, you're pressurizing another person to do it. It must be done. It must, it's your job to remind another person what needs to be done. Why don't you do it? Is it your employment to remind another person what, what has to be done? Why don't you do it? When you believe, you're no more in a haste. The gift, you see, when the gift of faith is in oppression in your heart, it makes you steady. There are certain situations when you know that the gift of faith, I'm talking of faith beyond yourself now, the faith of God, the faith of the Son of God comes on you. The gift of faith that is talked about as one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes God gives it to you to believe through a difficult situation. It can be in ministry, it can be in family. You know this is not your faith. I've been there. In spite of everything happening around, you find out you're steady, you're calm. Inside, there is a, a steady knowing that it is done. Are you here? It's not boo-boo-nya-ya. 
you know it keeps you in belief within your heart. You know it's done until it's, you see it manifested. I had the gift of faith operating in my life in, the, in some areas in my family between 19, uh, 2016 and 2017. After that, when that thing was done, that gift ceased. I didn't have it anymore. It has done its job. He that believes will not be in a haste. He will not be panicky. When you're panicking, you're not in faith. Jesus will ask you, where is your faith? Hello, Kukwegi now. Where is your faith? He that believes is steady, is stable, is calm inside. You, you, are, you are at peace with yourself. Believe. Therefore, I say to you, Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty four, 24, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe. You have prayed, you're praying. Dare to believe. Believe that you receive them. Believe that you receive those things you prayed for and you will have it. It doesn't matter. He said, whatever things, whatever things, whatever you desire, whatever it is, it doesn't matter what it is. Uh, once it's in line with the word of God, once you're not asking for another person's wife, you're not asking God for pro to protect you while you go and rob somebody's house. If it's in line with the word of God, if it's the will of God, believe. Whatever it is, believe. Believe. An open check, believe. That's your role to believe. God's role to bring it to pass. Sometimes we leave our role of believing and we're worrying and we want to know how God will do his own. It's not your business how he does it. God has many ways of accomplishing one mission. Jesus healed a couple of blind people. There are no two of them that he healed the same way. Allow God to do his work. Believe. You're a believer. A believer does what? A teacher does what? A student does what? Studies. Not beach. An usher does what? A believer does what? Believes. That's why you're called a believer. Believe. That's your business. That's your occupation. Believe. Believe. Romans chapter 4 from verse 17. Romans chapter 4 from verse 17. Is that chapter starts by saying, what has Abraham and our father discovered as touching the flesh? What then shall we say that Abraham, our father, has found concerning the flesh? Then verse 17, as it is written, I've made you a father of many nations. I've made you a father of many nations. But he didn't have one child at that moment in time. And even after that promise was made, he waited another 25 years. I said 25 years. Children of Abraham have the faith of Abraham. That faith, faith goes with patience. The process is important in anything you're doing. If you kill a man, do everything, and then suddenly that thing manifests, you, it will suck the glory of that victory out of you. The process, if the process, in the process you messed up, you will have the joy that you should have when there is a manifestation. Children of Abraham, do the works of Abraham. Abraham believed God. Abraham acted on divine instructions. He was obedient. Abraham was a titer. Abraham was a giver. A, a, a violent giver. Abraham paid corporate tax. Tax on the company, not on his person, on his salary. What's wrong with that? There is a man I know. I can say from our village, but it's from the neighboring village. They, we do things together. This man 
is, as at the last time, he was about 103 years. If that man walks in here, you won't believe it. And all his trade since I knew him, is this um, oil meal. He runs an oil meal, palm oil meal. That's his trade. He still does it. If you see him walking in church, what's wrong with believers, for Christ's sake? A 50-year-old man will be walking like a dede. What's wrong with us? And no matter the prompting, you're still going like that. Let me stop there. What's wrong with us? This man is in the Anglican church. Why don't you wake up from inside? What do you gain if you die at the age of 60? Because you allowed yourself to die. What do you gain? Wake up. God has it in his word for you. Take it and stop acting foolishly. An end to foolishness. It's foolishness to allow yourself to die before your time. It's not right. You rob God of what he wants to do. And the fulfillment that comes from that. This man, 103, by now he should be about 107. He's still alive. He, he walks without cane, without a walking stick. I happened to be in over some four years back. And it was Mother's Day. So I, I decided to go with my mom to her church that day. It was Mother's Day. They were, while the pastor was there raising all kinds of funds, I got tired. Up. By 2 p.m., I had to leave. The offering I wanted to give, a special offering I wanted to give you, yeah, since the pastor was not ready for it, I went and gave it to that old man, to that baba. You won't, you, you, you won't believe, if that man walks in here, you won't believe what I'm telling you that this is the man. And you know, we said time is, I, I'm not getting any older. In other words, it's running late for me. 75 years, God made him a promise. 25 years it, before it came to pass. Yeah, God said you shall be a father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he believed. If you believe you're healed, act like you're healed. There are things you need to defy. Yeah, you continue waiting for a pastor when to grow old, old and look old, and they wrinkle. Say, you go there for water side. The more I say it, the more it becomes a reality. Faith speaks. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickens the dead, gives life to the dead and calls those things to be not as though they exist. Who contrary to hope, natural hope has failed Abraham. He was advanced in age. Believed in hope. Contrary to hope, in hope believed. What's the hope? What gave him hope? That he would become the father of many nations according to what God said. Not according to what his age is telling him. Anchor your faith in what God said. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Are you here? It's what God says that counts. It's what God says that counts in Nigeria today, not what you're seeing around you. Most things around you speak negatives to you. What has God said? What was the last thing he, he spoke to you? Build on that, not on the, what is you happening, not on the newspaper reports. Go and buy any newspaper today, you see. Hey, 30 people killed in Sokoto. Hey, 45 killed in Zamfara. Hey, 10 kidnapped Saza. Bad, bad news. Where is the source of good news? The word of God. Whatever it tells you is the truth. So against what his age and everything around him was telling him, he believed in hope. Natural hope has failed. He anchored his hope in what God told him. Look at the stars of heaven. Can you count them? Look at the sand by the seashore. So shall your seed be. He anchored his hope. On that, quick God told him, so you shall your seed be. That's the way to go. Nowadays, I, I, some, some weeks ago, about two weeks ago, I was telling him, well, well, I think I told that two times. Nowadays, I prefer to go by revelation. What's God telling you about Nigeria? That's the, if he has not told you. 
listen to some of the things we say or ask him, what are you saying? Because if you look at what is happening around, the anger alone, one of my friends, I was counseling him, a man of God, again yesterday, I told him there was a time this thing was boiling in me. Seriously, the situation of Nigeria. He never even reached here this way that time. And it, I was boiling inside me. The thing was so, used to vex me so much. Until some time, when we were still in Japan Center, I decided, no, if I continue this way, I can't change anything. Every service, we pray for Nigeria. Wait, I began to pray more than ever before for Nigeria. And I feel better that way. And as we pray, God will lead us, show us things. You see this thing they're doing, they're wasting their time. You see these people, these people, the wind of God will sweep them away. And it will happen within 24 hours. They won't realize what hit them. They will be so disgraced. There will come a time when they find out that this is God. I, we can't hold on to this, you know. It was the officials of, officers of Pharaoh that came to him and said, Pharaoh, can't you see that Egypt is destroyed? Can't they see that Nigeria is being destroyed? But against what they are doing and against what I'm seeing, I focus on what God is saying. Are you hearing me? That's the way to go. I have inside information. Not from a SSS, of, but what God tells me is the inside information to work with. It looks hopeless, but it's not hopeless. So shall thy seed be. 19. According to that which is spoken, so shall, shall thy seed be. Like what? The stars of heaven, the sun by the seashore. And not being weak in faith, before him whom he believed, and not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body. There are certain, if you want to move with God, there are certain things you don't consider. Take your eyes off circumstances. If you want to believe God, if you want to go with God, if you go, want to get the divine result, Take your eyes off circumstances. Consider not. Consider not. Consider not certain things that are speaking to you contrary to what God is saying. Consider not your own body. He was old. Virtually impotent. Consider it not. In the light of what God has told you, don't consider what you're seeing. Don't consider Sarah's womb. There are two things he had to shut his eyes to and say, no, let God be true and every man a liar. Are you here? Consider not your body. Consider not the bank account. What did God say? It will come to pass. He considered not his own body, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. She was menopause. Remain on verse 19. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old. And the deadness of Pharaoh's womb. 20. 20. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. He began to praise. He began to thank God. He began to praise why waiting for the manifestation? There is a difference between manifestation and answer. Daniel, from the first day you began to pray, your prayers were heard, and I sent the answer, but there was a delay in the realm of the spirit that delayed the manifestation. Are you hearing me? When you pray, believe you receive them. Why you are praying? Why we are in this season of prayer? Believe. The manifestation can be one day. It can be one hour. It can be two weeks. It can be one month. But God answers. Once he answers, manifestation will eventually follow. This is the confidence. Verse 21. Verse 21. And being fully convinced, persuaded, that what he promised, he was able to perform. So he was giving him thanks. Why waiting for the answer? He has prayed. He was giving thanks. 
This is the confidence we have in him. First John 5, 14 and 15. This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. He hears us. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. He hears us. And since he hears us, we know that we receive of him the things we ask for. Are you here? Manifestation. We believe. But I believe I receive it. I believe I receive it. Thank you for it. I ask you for this. I believe I receive it. And you shall have it. You shall have it. You shall have it. Fear not. Only believe. Fear not. Only believe. Even, if, even if while you were praying to Jesus, Jairus was asking Jesus, come and, and help, save my daughter before she dies. She's at the point of dying. Even if while you were praying, you had a report that the situation is worse. Fear not. Only what? Believe. Only what? Believe. You are a believer. Do your job. Leave God's job to him. A believer believes. Fear not. Only believe. Number three. Even after you have prayed, speak. Speak. Father, thank you. I believe I receive it. I believe I received the answer. Nothing will hinder my answer from coming through. I have what I prayed for. And you can turn that mix the confession with thanksgiving. 2 Corinthians 4, 13. Go into the spirit of faith. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, he was quoting David, I believed, and therefore I spoke. How did you get saved? How did you get saved? You believed in your heart, the Lord Jesus, is he not? And confessed with your mouth. And you got saved. In the same way, for any that's in, 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 in the in Galatians, is it 2 6 or something? He said, As you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so also walk in Him. The same principle. We, is the spirit of faith that we have now as believers. We received it the day we got saved. We have in the same spirit of faith according as it, it is written. I believe, therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Tell yourself, I believe and so I will speak. Believing must be expressed in speaking. Have the God kind of faith. Even, a, even the God kind of faith, whoever says to this mountain, you, it, it expresses itself through spoken words, just like God did in Genesis. There was nobody God could pray to. So all he did was speak. And we have that same spirit of faith. So Jesus said, have the God kind of faith. And that God kind of faith works in two ways. It works through spoken words. And it works through prayers. But in each case, you must believe. If you're speaking, believe. If you're praying, believe. Are you here? Are you here? Believe. So the God kind of faith speaks and believes. And even after you have prayed about something and you're believing, speak it like God will speak. He declares those things that be not as though they were. That's the spirit of faith. That's the way God works. So he says, light, be, boom, light comes. In fact, the, the literal translation is this. He said, and God said, light be, and light is. Light be and light is. Because he spoke it, light is. Is, is. Light is. So speak. Speak. Not when we are in church alone. In the bathroom, speak. As you're driving, speak. The, the, what you pray for comes to your mind. Father, I thank you. I believe I receive it. I have a new life. I have a new family. There is peace in my family. As you believe, speak. Heart and mouth 
connection leads to creation. It's always the pattern. Speak from the magazine of your heart. That's the spirit of faith. Therefore, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed. In verse 22, Mark 11, Jesus said, have faith in God. Have the God kind of faith. He said, verily, verily, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, this is specific, is it not? This is specific. You look at a specific situation, you speak. Speak in specific words, not in vague language. Speak specific words that if they manifest, you will know this is what I spoke. Whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, doubt can come in your mind. You can always cast it out down. But don't allow doubt in your heart. And shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatever he says. If you believe that that word of God is true, if you believe that this scripture is true, what ought you to be saying? If you believe this scripture is true, are there not things you are supposed to be saying? Did you hear my question? If you believe this scripture, if you believe the Lord Jesus, are there not things you, be, you should be saying? I'm free from bondage. I'm free from addiction. This alcohol, you cannot hold me down. I'm not an addict to you. I'm not your servant, and I will never be your servant. I reign over you through Christ Jesus. There are things you ought to be saying. Number four. So, so, so. If you read, Ma I mean, Isaiah 58, where God was talking to Israel about how they fast and why they don't get results from fast, and then told them how to fast and get results. One of the things he told them, he said, when you are fasting, so give. Give. Consider a seed you can afford between today and next Sunday. Now that we are concluding this thing. Hannah prayed. Hannah prayed. Hannah prayed. And she went as far as if you, that was the, what she needed most in her life at that moment. How many of us believe it? The husband was saying, am I not better than you, to you than ten sons? No, she wanted a son. You are my husband, you are not my son. But that thing she wanted that was like the most important thing to her, she sold it like Abraham. Did you hear me? She sold. She backed up her prayers with a vow. She supercharged her prayers with a vow. It became a point of contact for her. So, Consider a seed. So, read Mark uh, Isaiah 58. You see it there. Deal your bread to the poor and so on. So, look at Psalm 66, verses 13 and 14. So, she prayed. She made a vow. In other words, she sowed. And the precious seed. I will go into your house with burnt offerings. I will pay you my vows. Quit my lips have uttered and my mouth has spoken when I was in trouble. In James 5, 13, the Bible says, Is any man afflicted? Is any man in trouble? Let him pray. When we are in trouble, we make certain vows. Even if you didn't make a vow, it's worth it sowing a seed. I'm telling you what I, I, I do myself. I'm telling you what I tell my children to do.
when it's really tough, even before it gets that tough, back up your prayers with giving, with seeds, targeted seeds. The law of Genesis is that every seed reproduces after its kind. Give. And so you see in 1 Samuel 1.11, 1 Samuel 1.11, you see Hannah saying, then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maid servant and remember me and not forget your maid servant, but we give your maid servant a male child. She was specific in her demand. Then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor shall come upon his head. And in other words, he shall be a Nazarene dedicated to God. And God answered her prayers, and she fulfilled her vow. It was tough for a woman that has been barren years to have a male child, and she vowed that child to God. Some of us change our minds when we have that child. Uh, I made a mistake. Ah, that's too much, okay? She vowed that child. Number five. Go into thanksgiving and praise in anticipation of the answers. Rejoice with the sheaves. See them in your hands and in your heart, the answers. See you carrying your somewhere and begin to give God thanks. Don't wait for the manifestation before you learn to thank God. That's exactly what Abraham did in Romans 4.20. Be not weak in faith. Being not weak in faith. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, praising God, worshiping him, thanking him in anticipation of Isaac. Hannah's countenance changed after she prayed. I can imagine her beginning to sing. Are you here? In anticipation of the answer. Colossians 4.2. Colossians 4.2. Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Being vigilant, watching over your prayer with thanksgiving. Let me see what you have in the Amplified there. Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Be persistent and devoted to prayer. Being alert and focused in your prayer life with an attitude of thanksgiving. Watch over your prayer with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. Ephesians 3.20. Ephesians 3.20. That's five, isn't it, number five? That's the last. Now, to him who is able to do, exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. According to the power that works in us. Verse 21. 21. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus. To all generations, forever and ever. Amen. He's able to do. It's not just we are giving him glory in anticipation of what he's able to do in our lives, in our circumstances, through our prayers. Unto him that is to go back to verse 20, that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think of him. According to the power that works in us, the power of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of supplication. To him be glory. So we begin to amplify him. We begin to magnify him. We begin to give him thanks and glorify him. Why we wait for the answer? Why we anticipate the answer? Why we are expecting the answer? Are we here? 
Now, when you read Isaiah, Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9, thinking of he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we think, we ask or think of him. Above our asking, the Holy Spirit enables us to pray beyond what we can ask in articulate language. In English, in Igbo, in Yoruba, the Holy Spirit extends our reach in prayers, goes to depths, depths of prayers that we can't articulate with known language, and gives us answers. So he reaches beyond our natural ability in prayers through the power of the Holy Spirit. Are you hearing me? And he doesn't limit himself to answering us according to our thinking. Our thinking is important. God answers us according to our thinking. But he goes beyond our thinking, exceeding abundantly above. Now, look at it. Isaiah 55, verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways. Verse 9. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And those are the ways by which he brings his purposes to pass in our lives. So if you are thinking of how God will do it, you limit yourself. You, the Bible says they limited the most high. The children of Israel in the wilderness said they limited the most high. They limited him by their finite thoughts. But God says as the heavens are high above the earth, measure it. So are my ways higher than your ways. So don't think out how God will solve any problem. Trust him. Believe him to solve it. Leave the means to him. Are you here? Leave the means to him. Believe. You're a believer. Believe. Dare to believe. Leave the means to God. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So he goes beyond our thinking, but our thinking is important. Our thinking and our prayers initiate the process most times. But God goes far beyond our prayers by the power of the Holy Spirit. He goes far beyond our thoughts. He implements according to his thinking. For he knows the thoughts that he has towards us, his plans towards us. Plans of well-being and not of evil to give us a peaceful, pleasant outcome. Are you here? So, as we round off on the fast, believe God for everything we prayed as a church. For everything you prayed as an individual, believe God. When you pray, believe and you shall have it. So what three, five things have I talked about? We've talked of the travel, which is the season of prayer and fasting, our undertaking in prayer and fasting. Number two, we said believe. Number three, speak. Number four, sow. Number five, thanksgiving. Give glory to God in anticipation of what you're expecting. Magnify him, glorify him, thank him beyond what you have physically in your hands. Thank him for that you're expecting. Children can teach us a lot of things about faith. That's why Jesus kept using them as an example of trust. The same way we can trust God. If you promise a child any toy for Christmas, you promise them now, I'm going to buy this toy. As long as the, the father says, I'm going to get you this toy, as long as they are concerned, that toy is a forgotten thing. God help you, Father, if you don't get, if that toy does not manifest on Christmas Day. You would have enjoyed that child's belief system. Are you hearing me? Don't ever promise them what you will not do. You're modeling for them how they can trust God. Jesus said when you pray, say, our Father who art in heaven. Prayer is based on relationship. Father's child relationship. The same way. So we are to believe it. If your father says it, believe it. How will it come to pass? His ways are higher than your ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth. You can't fathom it. 
The hymn writer said, God moves in a mysterious way. His wonders to perform. He plants his footsteps in the sea and rises upon the storm. You don't know how he will do it. It's not your business to work it out. What's your business as a believer? Believe. Dare to believe God. Dare to believe God. As we wrap up on these fasts and prayers, the prayers do not see, cease. Continue in prayers, watching over what you're praying or what you have prayed for with thanksgiving. Keep alert over your prayers with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Thank you, Father. Glory to your name. Father, thank you. We give you praise. We give you praise.